Several hundred dollars later, I wanted to see if these models can actually behave the same across different devices. I've actually ran the same prompt through GPT 5.1 Codex Max and Opus 4.5 in both Cursor and Droid. And I thought I would actually take on a real challenge here. And what I've done is I'm actually gonna throw this into my production app and I'm rewriting the backend. And I'm gonna use the AI SDK as a migration point to see if, how well these models can actually perform. And what I'm doing here is I used Opus to rewrite my yapping into an actual structure prompt. And then what I did from there is I threw that prompt into multiple models, into multiple interfaces to see what we would actually find out. And I wanna tell you something, one model did the audit and the others just didn't do anything. I had the same prompt using the same model, different interfaces had different behaviors. And what you're gonna witness here is a masterclass in prompting without being a prompt engineer. So let me show you exactly what happened. I reviewed Codex Max prompting guide. Let me create a structured prompt. So this is a really great prompt. Damn. I'm curious to give this prompt now to GPT-5, you know, pro, max, high and stuff, and just let it super cook on this. Cause it took all that stuff I yapped into a much more structured manner. It's weird that I have to do this, but I'm really curious to see because it's very clear that um, my basic instructions using the Opus model came back with a much more comprehensive review, right, to begin with. And then my Codex Max stuff just came back with like, it didn't even search any files or do anything like that. And it's just the way that these models behave, right? This is a complete like breakdown of the whole thing. Damn. Yo, Opus could write some prompts, bro. <laughs> this is crazy. Yeah, so we have basically, we have the context is the current state, the direct language models calls here, target state, and then the stack. I love the way that it breaks down this prompt format for us. This is really cool. Wow, this is very procedure based, you know, based off that research phase. Now I wanna see how good GPT-5 is at this task. This is gonna be ridiculous. I'm gonna create a new chat. Okay, so I'm gonna do back to plan mode, shift tab. We're gonna paste this new prompt in. We have AI SDK integration task. This is a beautiful plan. And we're gonna give it to everyone again. We're gonna use multiple models. I love this thing. It already has my previous model selected. Let's go. Let's go. You're witnessing a masterclass in how to prompt without being a prompt engineer. So in order for you to achieve this outcome, you just give it the OpenAI GPT-5 Codex Max prompting guide playbook and say, Yo, this is my prompt. This is how you cook with this. And this is how we did it, ladies and gentlemen. Yap in your prompt exactly the way I did, right? Very unstructured. I had a lot of stuff that I wanted to do. I do this all the time. That's just what I do. It goes, does the research for you. Opus 4.5 is a beast. I make sure you turn on that extended thinking, by the way. Extended thinking is turned on, right? And make sure web, web use is on. So it basically does a rewrite of that entire prompt in Markdown. Go ahead and hit copy. Once you hit copy, you put this thing up in the cursor in plan mode and just let it rip. Let it rip. You see it actually read more files, it even read the agent's MD stuff that's related to this. It did additional thinking step before it moved to the next thing. Now it has a good understanding. With the Codex Max one, this is just the medium mode. It came back and wasn't as detailed as the Opus one, right? It still has the similar thing where it says like, here's some steps. And then I think, is it even asking us any more questions? It just did a bunch of reads. Uh, yeah, okay. So it's, it's, it likes to do this in this way. It just does, it's like plain old steps. Like maybe it's much more token efficient. Which plan would you go with if you're looking at this? Would you choose the Opus one? Would you choose GPT-5? Now try Android. Oh yeah, let me, let me try this in Droid real quick. Um, terminal. So I'm gonna pull up Droid right here real quick. So what I wanna do is go to spec mode. We currently have slash model. And we're gonna select Codex Max and we're gonna go with high, which is the current one. I'm curious to see how the Codex Max one does. I'll do two, I'll do two of them as well. So I'll do Opus, Droid, and I'm gonna do um, model, and I'm gonna do uh, Opus 4.5. So let's go ahead and get this prompt from Claude and just copy and paste this one and see what it does. I started using Ghosty and I'm really liking this terminal a lot because of its ability to, um, you know, the way that it writes stuff to the screen. And huge shout outs to Eric Provence. Uh, we were talking about that in our Rate Limited podcast and he kind of brought this up. Okay, for Opus 4.5. And then if I do Command 2, now I can go to the second tab. Yo, that's cool. Slash model. And then I can go to Codex Max. Hi. Okay, perfect. So we're going to get this prompt here that we made. 
And we're gonna pop this into Droid and see what it spec mode does. So spec mode with Opus 5. Let's go ahead and put that in here. This is gonna do its thing. And then we're gonna do the same thing for the Codex Max High uh, and see what that does there too. And I'm gonna just do Droid and I'm gonna just do Medium. I'm just curious. We're gonna see what it does and kind of see what the differences are. Um, because I have always preferred the plan modes inside of Cursor because of how comprehensive they are, especially with the Opus model. It like, it went to work. It went to work for me. <laughs> when these models go to work for you, it goes to work. It's like, ooh, like it, I mean, look at it even saw the air handling stuff with Opus. Come on, this is so good. So let's see what, what Droid is doing. So Droid come back and says, okay, yes, um, allow for the MCPs. So Droid is doing its own tasks here. So review the design architecture, research the AI SDK V5 surface, identify the UI model selection, locate the billing, um, and then propose provider abstraction, and then draft a phase migration rollback plan, and then outline ca code scaffolding. This is really interesting because Droid is really kind of in its like spec slash planning mode, um, reading all the files, just like the way the cursor was doing. And it's reading all the documentation. Oh, wow, the plan's already done. Okay. So this is similar to what we got in Cursor, right? It says LLM call sites, error handling, model mapping, job orchestration, billing hooks, guidelines. So I think what the plan differences are is that in the Cursor plan mode for GPT-5 Codex Max, it was basically waiting for it to proceed for the next step to do the next, um, to do like the audit summary. Where in Droid, it chose to do it there. and. For whatever reason, there must be some instructions that are in there for maybe that type of task because that probably involves you know running some type of commands on the device. But like finish mapping LLM touch points because this actually didn't even finish it. Uh, define a provider registry types, um, implement the AI SDK, transcribe with fallbacks, and then route. So like these two are still research tasks that are still in its thing here, um, and is asking us to build instead of actually going to research it. Right. So. Um, that's interesting. It just did a quick high level scan of like, you know, here's kind of where you're kind of messing with, right? And that's basically, um, this is the the low fast. This is the medium model kind of did the same thing, right? It audit of the same thing. So it didn't really fully audit everything like we asked it to. Uh, and then the high fast thing, it, it's still asking the same thing. So all three models inside of Cursor didn't proceed with the audit action, but in Opus, it actually did that. And then now it's actually ready to start to do the implementation plan. Why did all the codex models not continue with that audit stuff, which is what we we're in the instructions, but the um, Opus model totally did. So as far as like token usage, um, you know, the high one used about 111,000 tokens and uh, about used 40% of the context window. So back to the GPT-5 codex medium, uh, codex max medium model inside of droid spec mode, we see that it's basically has done a lot of that research already. Um, so the audit of the current state shows this, and then here's the target architecture that it already has this plan mode. This is using the GPT-5 model. And then the phase migration, scaffolding, a new runner, du dual wiring paths, and then also the validation checks as well. So keep the grok untouched until cutover, and then assume new vars for others will be added. And then uh, if you approve, we'll kind of continue this action. So that's pretty cool. So. I guess if we're comparing the two right now, so the Droid plan versus the cursor plan, more specifically for the GPT 5.1 Codex Max Media model, <laughs> it's a mouthful. Uh, in cursor, all of the Codex models, the Codex Max models with 5.1 did not want to do that audit flow of reading the files. That was actually gonna be part of the post plan phase. Uh, the plan phase was like, hey, we have a plan for this, we're gonna do it. And it kind of had an idea of what files to touch. I found that really strange because the Opus model inside of Cursor actually did that audit already and is part of its importance context gathering. And um, that was that was kind of one of the key differences between the, this, you know, the same interface of IDE of Cursor, right? Uh, using Opus 4.5 versus GPT 5.1 Codex Max. So the other question is, well, how does this actually behave in Droid? And what is the difference between what Droid spec mode is doing? Inside of Droid, giving it the same exact prompt, by the way, actually ended up doing that audit, which is what none of what Cursor's apps did for that specific model. So there is a difference in the instruction set that's built into Cursor that um, 
he specifically says, hey, that's a step that's reserved outside of planning. So that's interesting. And for me, from what I've seen in Opus and what I'm seeing in Droid is that that extra step to go and actually audit the files, pull that into the context window, do some additional thinking steps, and then try to build a better spec or plan for your code is, for me, I feel like is a very important step because then it gets more grounding in terms of what actual files the agents should touch. Planning is probably where you should be spending a lot more time if you're not really gonna be writing a lot of the code. It's true even if you are actually writing the code because you do want to be very surgical in some of these ways, especially if your app is already in production touching lots of things. This is more of like, I would say, an advanced prompting, advanced planning techniques that most people really aren't talking about because it requires a lot of diligence and a lot of really attention to detail that you should be paying attention to. And just because you receive a plan and you start doing some implementations, doesn't mean you have to stick with all the code that's been committed. Because you have everything in a feature branch, you should always throw that out and try again. Uh, maybe try a different path or take things that you've learned and then reapply it and generate a new plan. So um, part of even yapping your thing into an Opus 4.5, which is what we did with Anthropics model here, uh, is the ability to come back to this later on and say, okay, we've learned all these things. We learned that the fallback mechanism should be tightened up by this, or this is a new feature in the AI SDK that we didn't know existed. Can we now generate a new plan given all these things we have learned? Pop that in here, it's gonna generate an even better prompt and it's gonna be much more precise. And that second time that you run it with a completely fresh branch and everything, the model will seem like it's just super smart and gets everything done. But you've taken all this accumulation of knowledge all of the areas were to point it to, and now I'm passing that back into the, the models. Whether you're actually writing the code or you're actually prompting the AI to write the code, they're very similar steps, right? So don't let these people's hot takes about AI generating bad code or slop or anything kind of slow you down. You're basically on this process of being a software engineer and wanting to use this software to keep improving. And I'm gonna keep running the same tests with Claude Opus next. Drop in the comments what model and interface you're using for planning. And I'm curious, what are y'all seeing? Are y'all seeing the same thing as me? All right, let's go ahead and get building.